Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to my session. Um, my name is Xin, and I'm very glad to share our experience with uh, machine learning powered by Flink in Weibo. And um, here's the agenda for today's talk. Uh, first of all, I will introduce a little bit about Weibo and then um, some high-level architecture overview about our machine learning platform, which is called WML. And after that, I will go into some detail about how we use Flink in WML. And, I, uh, and last but not least, our planning for the next steps, what we're going to do next to uh, improve our real processing with Flink. Okay, so uh, in case you guys are not familiar with Weibo, I will give a brief introduction. So Weibo is the most popular uh, and largest social media platform in China. And for the year uh, 2019, our DAU reached 222 million and the MAU uh, goes up to 516 million. So based on people's social relationship, people are uh, producing, uh, posting, and sharing news and information to all over the world. We build a social network that connecting people um, and mapping content to people based on their activities and interests. Uh, okay, so let's go to the next uh, part. So um, here's the architecture view about uh, WML. So WML contains multiple layers uh, from the very bottom to the top. Uh, first, the very bottom layer is the clusters. Uh, we have online, offline, and high performance computing clusters. Above that is the scheduling layer. Um, as you can see from the left, uh, Webox and Webflow is to uh, self-deployed uh, uh, a framework for people to uh, submit job to different cluster with a unified way. And we also use Yarn Kubernetes for uh, resource management. And um, for the computing layer, uh, we have a sub-deployed, uh, de developed a uh, WayLearn framework uh, for, use, uh, for user to define their own algorithm and UDF and data processing method. Um, Instead of WeLearn, uh, we have integrated several uh, computing engines such as uh, Hadoop, FlinkStorm, and also TF. And above compute is the model training part and, um, and online predicting. Uh, the, the, very, the very top is the application layer. We have supported several um, business scenarios uh, using WML, such as uh, feature generating, sample generating, and also online model training and online ref uh, inference. Okay, and then I will introduce a little bit about our design, uh, our, our development designs. So uh, there are two layers of DAG's design, um, as we showed in the, in the first uh, architecture view. Uh, so uh, we learn is the um, uh, development uh, framework for uh, developers to write their own UDFs. So we have uh, three abstract steps, uh, the input, process, and output. And for the real-time develop, it goes um, a different naming for source, process, and sync. And developer, developers can easily plug in their UDFs by overriding these three steps. And also, um, the outer layer is called Wayflow. So it can handle uh, multiple task dependencies, uh, even the task is in different clusters. And also, uh, scheduling them, uh, you can write cron expression for the schedule. And also, uh, you can rerun from, the, uh, from a very specific uh, task to the end or to some specific task. And also, can backfill uh, multiple days data, uh, you can specify a time period. And after several iterations, we, WML uh, can now support 100 billion parameters and, um, and uh, one, 1 million QPS and iteration cycle around 10 minutes now for the CTR models. And uh, like the iteration cycle is really depends on the business scenarios uh, and also the size of model and the uh, the sample joining time window. Uh, and then I will talk about the detailed uh, real-time computing platform in WML. For the infrastructure layer, uh, we are having Storm and also Flink cluster. We are using Grafana for the metric 
uh, monitoring and using Flume and Elasticsearch for the logging, storage, and also display. We are also uh, doing some snapshots and log stored at uh, HDFS. We used to have two different ML pipelines. As you can see, the uh, first two pipelines, one for online, uh, online training and also the sample generating, and one for the batch processing and also offline training. Um, since we are having two different pipelines, uh, we also have different compute engines like Storm, uh, Flink, Spark Streaming, and also Hive and MapReduce. We also have different uh, development framework, so lots of different things to maintain. Uh, then we started to ask ourselves a question. Do we really need two different um, processing framework? Uh, most, for, for most of the time, the answer is not. So then we started to integrate this two pipeline into just one. Um, here's a detailed um, uh, online model training pipelines. From the left side to the right is uh, for, uh, from the sample generating and for um, to the model uh, deployment and model survey. For the sample part, uh, we first filtering and mapping data and then do a multi-stream joining based on Flink timer and state APIs. Then uh, we output the uh, sample stream to sample pool. Uh, by the way, sample pool is the collection of uh, samples metadata, like uh, schemas, uh, Kafka metas. After the sample is generated, uh, model training will consume the sample stream, do some feature engineering, feature processing, and some gradient um, parameters calculation, and then store the parameters into VPS. VPS contains uh, two different uh, clusters. One is used for online training and uh, online prediction, sorry, online prediction, and one cluster for the training part. And why we are keeping two different clusters uh, is because we want to maintain the stability of the online predicting work. And, uh, and also PS servers will do some uh, snapshots periodically. So we have, we, since we are having two different clusters, we can do recovery easily. And then by using uh, CTCD and CICD tools, model will be trained and deployed continuously. And before deployment, before the model deployment, model evaluation, consistent check, and, and also the model stabilization will also be done automatically. Then model will be served uh, by, to, the, to the sorting by FB Thrift RPC. We are using FB uh, Thrift RPC is because it has better performance. Um, then I will talk about more about our sample generating process. So as you can see in this, um, in this image, so from the left is a sample service. Uh, we are having some offline data and real-time logs coming in, and then we do data processing, and then output to sample pool. Uh, by the way, we also um, introduce some features uh, in the data processing part. And after the sample uh, output to sample pool, it will be used in the model training. Then I will talk about more about how we do multi-stream joining. Um, so we have different uh, data sources come in first to do some um, filtering and mapping works. As we mentioned before, developers can write their own filter and mapping um, functions in the Wheeler framework. Then data will go into the joining window to be combined together on their keys. So after joining, uh, we will do some further filtering and mapping, append additional features, uh, read from the feature engineering, and then output the sample stream, and then uh, to store the meta into the sample pool. Here's an example of explaining how our joining time, uh, time window works. So if we have four different coming logs uh, representing different user uh, activities, 
In reality, there are some time difference for these logs to be received. Um, click action happened immediately most of the time, but read um, action varies a lot. They may come very late. Uh, in this case, we want to align those samples. So we are setting a joining time window, for example, for 10 minutes. Like uh, we recorded the timestamp when the first data comes and then output the joint sample after 10 minutes. That means um, even though read action may come later than the click action, since we are waiting for 10 minutes, uh, most of the case, the sample will contain both click and read data together, and the data is correct. And uh, here's some improvements we made. First of all, uh, first is um, flash out samples immediately when joining finish. Since, um, since not all the data needs to wait for the whole uh, 10 minutes, the time window size. As long as we receive the slowest action, like the read action, we can uh, put the action into the output model, and then we can flush this sample directly to the output sample stream. We do not need to wait until the 10 minutes ends. And also sometimes um, 10 minutes is not enough, even though we're setting the time window at a very large uh, size, it's still, can, um, it's still not 100% sure that the time is enough. So we may send out some negatives, like false negative samples, but later we receive the positive signal. In this case, we, we will resend the, cor uh, the correct sample again. That is called sample composition. And also, uh, in this part, uh, we store some uh, checkpoints and snapshots into the RocksDB and uh, RocksDB. So to improve the I.O. performance, we introduced Gemini, which has better performance than RocksDB. Uh, and also how, how we decide the, the size of the time window. So there's a balance between the success rate and the time window size. Um, success, success rate means uh, samples accuracy. If positive actions comes later than the time window ends, we have already sent a false, a false negative sample out. That is a, a case that the, the sample is a failure. So the larger the time window is, the higher success rate we can get. But the, t the larger uh, time window will cause um, delays. So since we, dis uh, since, since we want to have a like, uh, minimize the delay, the time delay, and also maximize the success rate. So there's a balance between the success rate and also the time window size. Um, the size will be decided by uh, specific business and different kind of models and, and also the uh, A-B test results. This slide shows how we submit our Flink job uh, to the cluster easily, and then um, how we manage our jobs. We have two different ways to submit jobs. One is called we client, uh, which is a command line tool for people to use. The other one is a UI format uh, called WIKE. Here's a, a, a small demo of, of the data source configuration part. So um, as we mentioned before, we have a sample pool, which is a collection of uh, data matters. So here we can just easily type in the sample ID. The, so then the data schema and uh, metadata will be get easily just by this sample ID. And then a uh, user can also specify their mapper and, uh, and filter UDF classes and choose the feature ID they want to join with their samples. And then they can just uh, do a one click submit to um, submit their job to Twinkle or VVP through Twinkle or VVP to Flink cluster. And uh, with Wike, uh, the, the UI tool, and also Twinkle, we can do the job status and job history management. Also, we are, we are using Grafana for the monitoring and alerting. Job histories will be stored uh, inside of HDFS. Um, another use case for Flink in WML is the multimedia feature generation. Uh, we have some image video models being trained offline because there are deep learning models, but the inference is online. 
consuming multi, uh, multimedia data like uh, text stream, image stream, video stream. We download uh, the, uh, the, the models and then do inference. Um, the output is the multimedia features. They will go into the data center uh, for the business and applications to use. To ensure the effect, um, we set up many models, samples, uh, evaluation matrix monitors to prevent some bad cases. Also, um, the monitors can detect when the program is done um, and it can be restarted automatically. Mm, here's, the, here's the monitoring page. Um, and since um, the restart will lose the data in the previous state, that will cause some delays since we will um, like restart everything from the, from the beginning and we will wait for another whole time window. But since we did uh, checkpoints and snapshots um, to the rocks DB, so we can just, um, when the restart happens, we can restore the previous days and continuously to do the previous joining. That will, uh, uh, that will also uh, decrease the delay. Um, so the last part of my t talk today is our next steps with Flink and how we can do better with Flink. As we shown before, uh, we have unified the online and offline pipelines together, but it cannot cover all the cases. For this time, um, streams cannot replace batch totally, but we can use one single code base or developing mode for batch and stream processing developing. Uh, basically, we want to do everything in SQL, um, like Flink SQL or Hive SQL. Then um, the filtering and mapping will be easier, and people that familiar with already familiar with batch processing can easily start to develop stream process works. So to help doing that, uh, we are unifying the table registering and metadata together, uh, creating some general APIs that support batch and stream together. And uh, back to this picture for the multimedia feature generating, we also want to do the, uh, do the model training in Flink. Here, this part. Uh, maybe TensorFlow on Flink. I saw some Flink talks last year. Uh, Flink communities and commuters did lots of great work to integrate TensorFlow into Flink. Uh, we will keep optimizing our ML platform. All right, um, that's all for my talk today. Uh, the machine learning with Flink in Weibo. Uh, thank you guys. <laughs>